Hello. Today's top story is one of redemption. A young Pokemon enthusiast turned man-child was vindicated today. He was called a dreamer. He was told that he spent too much time, effort, and money on Pokemon cards and that the hobby would go to zero. One man was also noted in saying, it's just cardboard. How could it be worth anything? Well, today, we will talk to that young dreamer and discuss his triumphs as he shows us his top five most valuable PSA Pokemon cards. Thank you. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is episode number eight and still loving it. Um, today, I took a recommendation uh, from one of the viewers and I'm gonna do a top five kind of most, I guess, most uh, most expensive cards that I have in PSA. This was hard to do because I have probably about 500 slabs of graded cards. Probably about 500 slabs of graded cards. Hey, what's up guys? I'm actually cutting up the video that you're watching right now. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps our growth. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. And they all, some really bunch together within um, kind of like a certain, you know, dollar amount. So these, and these aren't necessarily my most favorite graded cards, I guess I would say. Some of them are, um, but they're probably uh, just, I don't know, the most expensive, I guess. Um, or close to it. I may, and, and, and again, like the cards kind of fluctuate in price. Um, so number one is gonna be kind of like a more obscure one, but this is the EX Power Keepers Reverse Hollow uh, Charizard. The reason why this one is more costly uh, is because of its, because of its like rarity. Um, or I would, I guess I should say lack of PSA 10s. This one has a pop 33. So that's a, there's a population of 33 total uh, PSA 10s. And of course it's Charizard. Um, and this one weighs in at, I would say about $6,200. Uh, there's no, there's no recent sales data. I see one that's posted for that or best offer. So I'm just gonna say six grand uh, just for round numbers. But um, th yeah, this is one of those that if you're a Charizard collector, uh, which I am. I'm not a completionist though, so I don't. I'm not going for a complete set, uh, which I saw Rusty at TCA do, which is which was freaking amazing. Um, but I, uh, yeah, because it's just so expensive. There's some cards that are out of reach for me personally. But if you're a completionist, this is this is one of those cards where, I mean, really only 33 people would have the possibility of completing a Hollow Charizard set. Um, so yeah, that one that one is. I have that priced at about six grand depending, you know. Uh, next is going to be a, 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 maybe even a more obscure one than that Charizard, and that's a fan a 500-point fan club uh, Japanese Eevee. So this is an interesting one because it you can only get, there was only so many of these made, and not to mention it was only in Japan, so you had to have it brought, you know, imported over. Um, but it came back a 9 also. A 10 goes for well over... Ten thousand dollars. I saw one sell. I think at fifteen thousand. Um, but this one I have priced. There was a there was a sale in November for four thousand. That was like mid November, uh, mid to late November. And I see listings now for sixty nine hundred and then ninety nine hundred dollars. Again, this is a very scarce card. And this is one of those cards where I might. I've I've thought about sending it to eBay to kind of maybe reevaluate uh, if it could get a ten because this thing is super clean. I uh, picked this up five years ago from a guy, and at the time I bought it from him for 700 bucks, which was an obscene price for a card of this nature because Japanese wasn't wasn't very popular. Um, but he kind of explained to me the rarity on this. I did my homework. I found that it was rare, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna take a chance on it. And then I sent it into PSA, and it came back a nine. Um, but I, I, I truly believe it could, get a, it, it could get a 10 because the hollow is super clean, the back is super clean. Um, but yeah, I have this one priced right now at $7,000 in my guesstimation. But again, uh, not much sales data because of the scarcity. So that's number two. 
Uh, the next is a Dead Ringer, obviously. This is a, Shadow, a base set Shadowless uh, Charizard. So for those of you who know, there's no shadow here and there's no first edition stamp. So this kind of falls in between uh, base set unlimited and, and first edition. So this was a variant run uh, right in between those two runs. So this has, this has no shadow and it came back a nine. This came out of a, uh, of a collection. I bought a complete, and if not a little bit more, <clears throat> raw collection of of shadowless cards. So this guy, so this guy, I guess, at a garage sale, he opened a, sh a box of shadowless, a base at shadowless, and he kept everyone in pristine condition. And I bought the collection off of him uh, two years ago for four hundred dollars total. It had a Venusaur in there that you will see later. It had a full complement of shadowless hollows, all the raw shadowless uh, like uh, commons and uncommons. And I got, I, I have those are still actually at PSA. I sent them. I sent them off about six months ago, but those are in a huge lot being graded. Uh, and a lot of those are gonna come back tens, I, I have a feeling because they're just in such good condition. But yeah, this came back a nine. I did a rush uh, kind of or service on this. And yeah, this card right now is weighing in at about $9,000. When the craze was happening with the Logan Paul thing a few months ago, uh, these this card was selling, I wanna say it was close to $20,000, no joke. And even then, I didn't have the heart to sell it because I don't know. I just love it. I love these cards. So yeah, that's number three, and that's coming in at nine grand. Let me move these over. Number four on the list is also a natural, right? This is a PSA 10 Neo Destiny, uh, and it's not obviously not first edition. No first edition stamp there. Um, but yeah, it's a Neo Destiny PSA 10 Shining Charizard. Uh, this is a obviously a grail card for me. I love the artwork. It's a beautiful card. Um, I would say, and it's obviously Charizard again, right? There's a theme happening, right? Charizards. Um, but this card is always going to be in high demand. It's never, ever, I don't think, unless you pay an obscene amount, it's never an, a bad investment uh, to get into, you know, to Charizard because people love this card or love this, love this Pokemon. Um, but yeah, I picked this up, I want to say about a year ago for 2000 bucks and I bought it from, you know, from a very cool guy and we, he did the deal offline with me. So like not on any kind of platform where I'm going to get charged a fee. So it was a flat 2000 bucks, including shipping. And I did pretty well on that because right now, um, there's e easy sales for about nine grand. And this is another card that got up. I think it was rival. It was getting close to $20,000 uh, during the, the Pokemon boom a few a few months ago. But I could I can't see why it wouldn't, I, 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 couldn't, I, I, couldn't, I could imagine it getting there again because the scarcity of these is there. So there's not, I mean, there's not gonna be so many packs opened of this set where they're gonna pull a shiny Charizard and then it's gonna come back at 10. So many things have to happen correctly for this to come back now. One of my biggest regrets was not buying a first edition PSA 10, which I had the opportunity like two years ago for about $5,000. And I just didn't have the, the capital for it then. So that's number four. And then lastly is gonna be one that you wouldn't expect. It's not a Charizard. Uh, but lastly, we have a Shadowless Venusaur Hollow PSA 10. And this came out of the same set uh, as this, oh, as this guy right here and like I said I bought this set for for 400 bucks um, and it was a garage sale and <clears throat> at the time even even then I knew I was getting a good deal because shadowless mint shadowless Charizards were selling on eBay for about three to four hundred dollars so I knew I was getting an incredible deal but even then he was kind of astonished that I even said four hundred dollars and, and I was kind of like almost saying maybe I should be 500 for it um, but this came out of that set and yeah it came back a PSA 10 and I am like so incredibly fortunate to have this card in my set because this card just like a, like this has a population of 88 in a PSA 10 total um, and again it's that shadowless so it's you know it's a variant set that falls between base set and between um, first edition or I'm sorry uh, base set unlimited and first edition 
And so just to give you an idea, so this has a POP88 in PSA 10. The first edition uh, version of this card has a POP 136. So it's almost half and they have a similar amount graded um, of this card. So between first edition and Shadowless. So that just goes to tell you, so again, to think of it in terms of like a, being a completionist, you only 88 people on the planet can have a Shadowless set in PSA 10 because uh, they need this card, right? So that kind of puts it into perspective on how many people are in this hobby and <clears throat> you know, and if they're trying to complete sets, it becomes very difficult, especially when PSA is being, you know, more and more strict as time goes on. But yeah, so that last one, and I have this one coming in at, at 9,000 bucks. And, and one, so there's not a lot of re sales data again because of the scarcity. One is listed on eBay for $9,900, and there's another one listed for $14,800. Uh, so not gonna go with that one, right? Because you could just simply buy the one for $9,900. Um, but I think $9,900 is a little bit lofty. Uh, so I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this one in at nine grand. And it's kind of interesting. Um, one, a very, a very big guy in the community. Uh, I almost, I almost did a trade with the, for this exact car back then, and we had the value back then at I think it was 500 bucks. So that just goes to show you, and that was like two years ago. That goes to show you how much uh, the value of these cards has risen. Uh, so yeah, so that's the that's the last one. I'll put this guy right in the middle here. So I don't want to end the video without opening any cards. So I'm going to, of course, take my degenerate stabs uh, at that at the Charizard in Evolutions, and I'm going to open up three more packs. So let's do it. Anyway, if you've made it this far. I want to thank you guys, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, because I am. And yeah, this was a this was a cool thing to do. I was not mad. Gosh, am I ever gonna do the freaking pack trick right? Gosh, that could have been a Charizard, honestly. Am I ever gonna do the pack trick right? It's three from the back. I have like some some old man mental mental block with doing the pack trick right. I will do it right one day. Yeah, Let's see if I pull another reverse reverse Charizard, since that th seems to be the theme for me and my daughter. Every time I open up Evolutions with my daughter, I pull a reverse a reverse rich uh, Hollow Charizard. And it's a sign, my chop, Voltor. <laughs> it's like it's like it's like taunting me. It's like taunting me. It's like no, you can't have you can't have you know, you can't have the big brother. You're just gonna have Charmeleon, in a reverse. All right. Last one. We know there's not going to be a, a hit per se in here because of the code card. Misty, Revive, Haunter, Diglett, Ratata, Charmander, Energy, ooh, cool, Pikachu, and a Reverse Rare uh, Electrode, and a Starmie. Is that a rare? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me. This was really fun to do. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And yeah, if you're enjoying the content, drop a sub, uh, drop a like, drop a comment, anything. Uh, yeah. See you guys next time. Bye.